But we now have, thanks to the internet, a new tool to understand the human psyche, people's Google searches. And people tell Google things. They're kind of secrets, things they might not tell to friends, family members, doctors, surveys. Uh, I call Google digital truth serum. And when you analyze this data, anonymous and aggregate to protect everybody's privacy, uh, you get an interesting new window into the human psyche. Uh, for example, and I think uh, less and less we're going to be using surveys to understand people, and more and more we're going to be using Google Trends to understand people. So the, a different view of people on Google, people make more searches for porn than for weather. Uh, even though if you ask people in a survey, only about 20% of men and 4% of women uh, admit to watching porn. Uh, particularly 100% admit to checking the weather. <laughs> and Google is proving, Google Trends data, this anonymous and aggregate data, is proving better than surveys uh, for many, many questions. So for example, it, they're better than surveys in predicting who's going to turn out in an election. Uh, you can't really trust what people tell surveys, uh, whether they're going to vote, because people hate to admit that they're not going to exercise their civic duty, they're not going to vote. But you can predict with high accuracy in the weeks before an election, if more people are searching on Google how to vote, where to vote, uh, turnout tends to be high in those areas. Uh, really, really sad but important. It's been shown that you can predict much better than surveys suicide rates in an area by, uh, again, sad searches on Google, how to kill yourself, suicide, commit suicide. These predict uh, with pretty high accuracy suicide rates in an area. And we can also use this to measure racism. This is how I actually started uh, my research. I uh, wanted to see if Google Trends could be used to measure racism in the United States. If you ask people in a survey, are you racist? Uh, pretty much nobody in the United States today admits to being racist. It's considered socially unacceptable to have racist attitudes, or at least it used to be considered socially unacceptable. Uh, but people have... Uh, people on Google, uh, when they're alone and they're uh, not talking to anybody, do express with disturbing frequency uh, racist attitudes. This is the percent of Google searches that include the N-word, not the N-word, uh, like not, they're not typing the N-word, they're typing the actual word. And these searches are mostly for jokes mocking African Americans. A large percent of these searches also include the word jokes. And I was shocked by how frequently people are making these searches. This was searched in the time period I was looking at with about the same frequency as Migraine and Economist and Daily Show and Lakers. So it wasn't a fringe search. Millions of Americans uh, were making these disturbing, make these disturbing searches every year. And I was also shocked by the location of these searches. If you had asked me, based on everything I knew about American history, where racism against African Americans was highest, I would have said South, 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 South. Uh, racism would be predominantly concentrated in the Deep South. And you definitely do see with darker red, meaning more racism, that many of the parts in the South are among the highest, Southern Louisiana, Southern Mississippi, dark, dark red. But right up there are upstate New York and Western Pennsylvania, Eastern Ohio, Industrial Michigan. I think the real divide in racism these days isn't so much North versus South, it's much more East versus West. You see how it gets a lot lighter as you get to the Western part of the United States. 